Hi guys, on March the 8th, we celebrate International Women's Day and the whole of March is Women's History Month. On Monday the 8th, we celebrate achievements of women around the world throughout history and we celebrate inspirational women in contemporary society. Now, some of you may know that I am actually a Kiwi. So I was born the other side of the world in a country called New Zealand, and I am a New Zealand citizen. So this is my New Zealand passport. Now, as such, this International Women's Day, I would like to celebrate the achievements of the New Zealand Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern. Now, Jacinda Ardern is a role model for all women around the world, not just in New Zealand. And um, she is the, one of the youngest ever world leaders. She is the third female prime minister of New Zealand. And she even had a baby just a couple of months after she was elected prime minister. She even took her baby to a United Nations General Assembly meeting in New York. Very first ever world leader to ever bring an infant to an international meeting. Not only that, but Jacinda's leadership in New Zealand has transformed the country, but most specifically her dealing and leadership throughout this COVID crisis over the last year. Now, as you can imagine, it was really difficult for me to just choose one woman to speak to you about. So enough from me, I'm gonna hand over now to some other familiar faces. Hey, yeah. Uh, I wanna to speak to you about a scientist who inspires me. Her name is Helen Torsig. Um, Helen was born in 1898 and that in itself is part of the story. The fact that she was a woman scientist of that era is quite unknown. Um, she went on to get a medical degree, which was really rare. She went on to discover and create, sorry, the field of um, paediatric cardiology. And the really inspirational part for me was that she went on to save hundreds and hundreds of babies because she discovered something called blue baby syndrome and she created a repair for that syndrome, which meant that babies weren't dying of the condition. Now, as well as being a woman uh, at a time where women weren't successful scientists and doctors, Helen was also inspirational because she was severely dyslexic. She had really poor hearing. And like I said, she was a woman. And in that time, those things didn't happen. But she overcame all those adversities and she basically pushed for what she wanted. And at the age of 98, where she died, she could celebrate her successes. Hundreds of babies saved because of her determination. So inspirational. Hello, I'm Miss Harnett and I'm here to talk to you today about an inspirational woman in geography named Mary Anning. Now Mary was a paleontologist and she lived in the 1800s. What was so fascinating about Mary was that she came from a very poor family, which meant they couldn't afford to send her to school. Mary actually taught herself to read and write, which was an amazing accomplishment for a woman of her time. It allowed Mary to study geology and through geology she was able to actually produce lots of scientific work on fossils. Living on the south coast of England meant that Mary quite frequently would actually find fossils in the coastline. This was because after a storm surge, the water from the sea would actually break down the cliff, exposing different fossils. What made Mary's work so amazing was that she was the first woman to discover an ichthyosaurus. Now an ichthyosaurus is a uh, dinosaur which lives in the oceans. Just to demonstrate, I've got my area of coastline here and this is my sea. So when the water actually approaches the coastline, it erodes away at the, the, uh, the sediment and exposes fossils. Now, unfortunately, I don't have an ichthyosaurus, but I do have a Tyrannosaurus rex. So what would happen was that Mary, after a storm event, would come down to her area of coastline with her hammer and she'd actually dig away at these fossils and she would then examine them. Now Mary was able to produce lots of scientific reports on her work and she's still celebrated in the scientific uh, community today. Mary's work actually allowed scientists to discover that the earth wasn't just a few thousand years old, which is what they believed at the time, but that actually it was many millions of years old. Personally, I believe she's an amazing woman and as you can see, I love dinosaurs. 
So yeah, good on you, Mary. Thank you. Many of you will not be aware, but my subject is actually music, not history, as I've been teaching for the last couple of years. And I wanted to update you on a significant woman in my subject area, someone who none of you have ever heard anything about. That's a lady called Catherine Danish Williams. Um, she's a good friend of mine and she's also the godmother to my eldest daughter. But I first met Catherine as an organist in a cathedral choir when I was 19. And Catherine is significant because she is the first female organist of any English cathedral ever. Now this is a tradition that dates back nearly a thousand years and there's been organists and choir masters in cathedrals for all of that time. If we go back 200 years ago, in fact if we go back 50 years ago, all singers and all people who actually were in a cathedral choir in this country were male. There were no females whatsoever. So to go from that point 50 years ago to her being the first female organist of Guildford Cathedral in 2008 is a significant achievement. It really represents a woman in a man's world, proving that gender and stereotypes should not exist. My inspiration on significant women in the music industry won Billboard Woman of the Year at the age of 17. She's the youngest female artist to have ever won a number one album in the UK and started writing her own music at the age of 11. She recorded her whole album and created her whole album in her bedroom with her brother and wants to prove to young people today that you can make an album and you can, you can create your own music wherever you are. She wants to pave the way for an entire generation of younger women and dares to be different. She wants to prove to people that you can be different in society and don't have to conform to societal norms. Have you guessed it? That's right, it's Billie Eilish. An inspirational woman for me as a psychology teacher would have to be Dr. Elizabeth Loftus. Dr. Loftus um, did her psychology degree at Stanford University in 1966. Imagine going to Oxford or Cambridge during a period where it was only men at your university. She was the only woman on her psychology course. Dr. Elizabeth Loftus received a great deal of abuse from the men on her course and even from the lecturers who taught her psychology. This didn't deter her and even though she was voted the least likely to succeed, she has become one of the world's most famous psychologists. Her work on eyewitness testimony has been one of the most important pieces of work in cognitive psychology. Her work has been used in many court cases and we even use it to do our coursework in year 13. For me, Elizabeth Loftus has inspired me to become a psychologist and for that reason, she is my inspirational woman. Hi everybody, I've been asked to talk about who I think was the most influential woman in history. The woman who I've picked is Florence Nightingale. She was an extremely important nurse in the 1800s who helped during the Crimean War. Whilst there, she noticed that nurses weren't trained properly and the hospitals were actually doing the patients more harm than good. When she got back from the Crimean War, she, put, she petitioned the English government to improve hospitals and at the same time opened up a college to fully train nurses for the first time. On top of this, she was also the creator of the pie chart. And for me, even more importantly, she's also the person that we named my daughter after. Um, thank you for listening to this. Hi, on this International Women's Day, I'd like to talk to you about the author Jane Austen, who was born in the late 18th century and died in 1817. Um, she wrote a lot of famous novels, including Pride and Prejudice, uh, Sense and Sensibility and Emma. Most of her stories were based on strong female leads and her, along with the likes of the Brontes and Mary Shelley, really blazed a path for female writers um, through the 19th century and into the 20th century. Um, she never married herself, despite having had an offer of marriage. Um, but when you read her books, you can really see that she obviously experienced what it was like to be in love and the different aspects of society um, and, and how Jane Austen's work weren't just about relationships between men and women, but were actually about how society was evolving and how people um, related to each other in that society. 
Maya Angelou was an American um, poet and writer who lived through the 20th century right up until her death in 2014. Um, as a black female um, writer in America, she was also part of the civil rights movement um, and she has had a significant impact on, um, on black female writers um, ever since. I'm just going to read you a little bit of a quote from one of her poems. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. That's from her poem, Still I Rise, which is from one of the most uh, famous of her collection of poems. Um, she is an important female figure for writers and women the world over, and her poetry um, lives on well past her well past her physical demise um, in terms of grit, determination and the ability to do anything that you want to do. I'd like to discuss um, Emma Watson with you. Most of you will be familiar with her for playing Hermione Granger in the Harry Potter series of films. Um, at just 30 years old, she has had a significant impact on the world of feminism uh, and gender equality. Um, she was appointed a UN Women Goodwill Ambassador in 2014 um, and was instrumental in the He For She movement, which, um, which promotes and campaigns for gender equality across a range of, um, of industries, um, of uh, careers um, and in society in general. As a 21st century female icon, um, I think that this might be the person that most of us can relate the most with living in our society where um, women have a much freer voice um, and she uses hers for good to promote um, equality across the genders um, and the power of women's voice. Mm -hmm.